Annyeonghaseyo, my name is Katie, and today I'm doing a drama review. It's been a while since I've done a drama review on my own. Hannah and I have posted a lot of us together lately, so I think the last one I did actually was school 2015, and that was quite a while ago. So anyway, I have a new drama review for you today. How exciting. So today I'm going to be reviewing Oh My Ghostess. I'll admit this drama... I was not planning to watch it. At least it wasn't really high on my to watch list. I don't know, it just didn't really appeal to me. But then, like, Drama Fever was sharing a lot of clips from it on their Facebook page, and I was just seeing lots of good things. And then I saw that Kim Sol Gi is starring in it, and she was like my favorite character in Flower Boy Next Door because Flower Boy Next Door wasn't really my favorite drama, but I really liked her character in that. And then I saw she was in this and I'm like, hey, hey, I want to see her in a more main role. So while I was waiting for more episodes of Scholar Who Walks the Night, I decided to give Oh My Ghost just a shot. And wow. <laughs> It, wow, I, I didn't know I would enjoy it this much. I really, really liked it. If you don't know what Oh My Ghost is about, the basic synopsis is a virgin ghost goes around possessing women in order to try and fulfill her virgin grudge so she can ascend. But of course, there's much more that's really going on that you don't know about until you start watching the show. I would say this is kind of like a combination of Coffee Prince and School 2015 with the supernatural aspect, maybe The Master's Son, which I haven't watched yet. I really need to watch that. Now this show centers around a restaurant uh, with chefs and that's where you get the whole Coffee Prince vibe. It has, the ver it has a very similar feel to it, just the mannerisms between the characters in the restaurant it just feels a lot like what we had in Coffee Prince, the very playful feeling and lots of banter between the characters. I loved those characters, by the way. It's also a murder mystery, which you don't realize that when you first start watching it. But when you start getting into it, it's like, hey, hey. It's a lot more suspenseful than what you would expect, because I was not expecting it to be this suspenseful. And I'm really glad it was, because if it was just focused on a virgin ghost trying to fulfill her grudge to ascend to heaven, that would have been, I don't know, it would have been too much for me. I would not have been invested in the plot, I don't think. But this, this was very interesting. It's a very odd combination. It's a supernatural cooking murder mystery show. Sounds very weird, but it was very good. This show stars Park Bo Young, Jo Jung Suk, and Im Joo Hwan along with Kim So Gi. They were all great. I haven't seen any of them in a drama, I don't think, except for Kim So Gi. Park Bo Young, because she plays a woman who gets possessed by a ghost, did a very good job because you could see the total difference between their personalities and she did a very good job of portraying Kim Sol Gi's mannerisms and character and movements. It was very impressive. I liked it a lot. And besides being a supernatural mystery, the show was very comedic. I thought it was hilarious. I mean, there were times where I just could not stop laughing, especially because of all of the characters that worked at the restaurant. Again, they had a very Coffee Prince-esque vibe to them, and they were very humorous. I loved the sous chef. He was hilarious. One of my favorite episodes, probably, was episode 9, where the sous chef had his birthday, and they all pretended to forget it, and then they gave him this really cheap knockoff belt, and then they went drinking and they did karaoke, and that's probably one of the funniest karaoke scenes I've ever seen in a drama. Of course, it helped that they were singing Big Bang music because Big Bang music appeared constantly throughout this drama, and I thought that was really funny because they would like sing Loser constantly. It would just like be in the background or they would be singing it, and this karaoke scene was absolutely hilarious because all five of them were totally drunk and you know I don't necessarily condone drinking but in dramas it tends to be pretty funny I would say one of the other funniest drunken scenes in a drama is in My Love From Another Star and this was up there with that one just because they're already hilarious characters when they're sober and when they were drunk it was just even funnier so I really loved the comedy aspect because it was, it was hilarious. As for the villain, I want to talk about the villain in this one because he was very interesting. I'm not going to spoil this 
because it would be spoilers and I want this to be spoiler free. But the villain in this one, I had many conflicting feelings about him because you know, if you think about it, all the stuff he did wasn't his fault, and that made it very painful. And what was even more painful was all of the suffering that was brought upon all of these characters that I loved because of him, and he... it wasn't even really him. It made me mad. And you know, I kind of wish we had gotten to see more of the aftermath in the last episode. You know what I'm talking about. I wanted to know more about what really happened to him in the last episode and the people he was close to, I don't want to give spoilers. You'll know what I'm talking about because, like, one of the characters who was very close to him, she was a minor character. I really liked her, though. Um, I kind of wish we had gone to see more what happened between them. I mean, we did get a glimpse. We got a two years later, and that was great. But I did want to see a little more, and I did think there were a couple plot holes not very big ones at all, just little things that I noticed I'm like, hey, they never brought that up again. And one of them is Chef King and So Hyung's friend. Um, I believe he was So Hyung's ex-boyfriend, and they went to his grave in one episode, I believe. In, like, in one of the first episodes where So Hyung appears, they went to this grave, and I'm pretty sure it was her ex-boyfriend's, because he died, and they were talking about how they were friends and I, I want to know more about what happened to them which we're obviously not gonna get now but I, I was just kind of curious if that would actually apply to the story of her or if he just died and they were visiting his grave I'm not sure and you know it's not really a big deal but it would have been interesting because usually k-dramas don't have scenes that are unnecessary to the plot usually they're very plot oriented or it's comic relief or it's just I, I don't know. Usually there aren't irrelevant scenes. So it was a little weird, but it was just like a really quick scene. It didn't take up much, too much time with the plot, and maybe it was just to introduce So Young. Another thing I really liked about this show was that there wasn't really a love triangle. There was, but it wasn't one of those really angsty ones. It, there were actually a couple different ones, I want to say, but it, it really it didn't bother me because they were, they were resolved really quickly and they were not angsty at all and they didn't drag out. So it was okay because, hey, people can have multiple love interests in their lives, but just decide. And that's what they did in this show, so I really appreciated that, and I really, really liked that. As for the ending of this show, I really liked it. Some people thought it was a little rushed, but I thought it was a pretty decent pace for a drama because some of them are really rushed. <laughs> Princess Hours. But this one was really nice and you know it gave you a good amount of time. I again I got really major Coffee Prince vibes from the ending which doesn't really surprise me but I thought they did a good job of the end and it wasn't it wasn't Secret Garden. I decided to stop comparing endings to Secret Garden because honestly nothing's gonna beat that but it really was a good ending and I just appreciated it. This drama actually made me cry during like the last two episodes just because all these characters were in so much pain even the villain like I felt sympathy for the villain because this poor guy like ah he's had a hard life one of the things that always gets me in dramas are parent-child relationships and when a parent is dying or when a child is dying it hurts me because you see how much pain it causes each other. That was one of the things that got me in Mask. And in this one, it happened ag again because obviously one of the main characters is a ghost and you kind of get to see what happens to her family after she dies. And it's very sad, especially in the freaking last episode, I was crying just because that kind of stuff always gets me. Honestly, it gets me more than like, sad romantic relationships but that's how it was in Secret Garden and Mask and this one and like all of those dramas it was always the parent-child relationship that got my feels and this made me cry I was not expecting it to make me cry but it did another wonderful thing about this show was the character development in the beginning the main character played by Park Bo Young was very weak and meek, hey that rhymed, and she was just very introverted and by the end I'm not gonna say what exactly happens but there obviously is character developments because usually I don't like a weak female lead but that served a purpose towards the plot 
and towards the character development. And she was definitely stronger in the end and I really liked it and I, I thought that the events in this show did a very good job of leading her through this development and you know it just it was very touching it was very touching and emotional and feelsy and it was beautiful sorry I'm I just finished this show. It's like 12.30 in the morning. I literally just finished it, so I'm a little emotional. I'm still like processing it all, but I really liked it. I also really liked the soundtrack for this. I really like soundtracks for dramas for the most part, but this one just had a very nice one. This one just had a very nice soundtrack, instrumentals, actual songs, everything. I really liked the music they would play while they were in the kitchen. They played a lot of jazz, and it was just very, I guess, stereotypical cooking music. I don't know what I mean by that. I guess you would get it if you've watched the show. You'll know what I'm talking about. But I really liked the soundtrack. I liked the song. Oh My Ghost, I like Stay, Eyes, Leave. I would recommend checking out all of those. They're all on iTunes. You can look up the Oh My Ghost to soundtrack because it is on iTunes, which is great because drama soundtracks aren't always on iTunes. So overall, I really, really enjoyed this show. I loved the romance, the comedy, the mystery, the drama, and you know, the show was it didn't have many melodrama elements, and if it did, it, they were very toned down. They were very mellow. Mm -hmm. Anyway, I just really liked this show. So it really surprised me, and I'm very pleased with that. Let me know if you've watched Oh My Ghostess and what you thought of it. I would be happy to discuss it below. Hannah and I are both going to finish up Scholar Who Walks the Night next week, so hopefully we can film a review on that. Be looking forward to that, and I will see you soon. Ong Yang.